Come on, let's give Jesus some praise this morning. You already, you really could have kept going. Let's give Jesus some praise. Help me honor the pastor and the woman of God of this house. Please help me. I'm so incredibly honored to be here again and tea with my brothers and my sisters. While we're still standing, we're going before the presence of the Lord. Lord, you're already here. saying yes it was you that called us it was you that stirred us it was you that provoked us have I no way in this place give us what we need give us what we seek may we never be the same may we be changed by your presence Father we declare victory in this house at the end of this day we will be forever changed, forever changed for thy glory, forever changed for thy glory. Strengthen us now, we pray, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet to do thy will, O oh Lord. And we promise to give you all the praise and all the precious people of God said, amen. 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 Please hug your neighbor if you can. Just hug him in the Holy Ghost. Tell him it comes from Pastor Bennett. Just hug him in the Holy Ghost. Appreciate you. Appreciate you so much to all of us brothers and sisters and saints and thank God for the incredible hospitality of your sons and daughters in the gospel extremely kind appreciate a few saints that are here with me from this is Pentecost and extending parts of this is Pentecost please stand it's just a few we got Daniel and Shabu and Christine and Kim just praise God for them just a few that came to support their pastor and hallelujah um, yeah the presence of the Lord is already here and it's very thick in this house and you can stay in that worship with me just a little bit longer in just a few minutes because but the lord um we understand the hour and the day and i'm very full because i anticipate him i anticipate him more than speaking um, the scripture says that when the cloud came in the house we ain't need y'all no more preachers just sit down so so I anticipate him more than speaking so that he can give us uh, what we need. We all recognize the hour. We all recognize the day and the trouble. But what, what's really, really, um, what I can't shake and I'm still trying to own it and walk into it is, is God unctioning and saying that he wants his people to own him and own our assignments. To own it and to possess it and to understand that nobody can do what I do that nobody has been through what I've been through, nobody have the story that I have, and nobody understands the pant after God that I have. You, you understand? You're putting you in there, right? So then if we understand that, then we understand that there's to be compared to nobody. Your walk is to be to compared to nobody. Your ministry is to be compared to nobody. Okay, I think I'm good. Thank you, brother. Your ministry is to be compared to nobody. Your lifestyle is to be compared to nobody. The scripture says, for you are my workmanship. Hallelujah. That he said that I've ordained unto good works. I'm the one that came and got you. I'm the one that came and found you. Some of us know the truth is if some of y'all knew our history and our lifestyle, you wouldn't let me do nothing in your church. But <laughs> hallelujah, shout hallelujah. But because God had purpose and because the purpose didn't happen when we came to the altar, the purpose happened before the world began. So there's absolutely, positively nothing about my life that I have to be ashamed of. I was marked for greatness before the world ever began. I need some praise in this house. Work with me just a little bit. And so everything in my strength and everything that I toil with and definitely in these past two years it's just been an absolute toiling and a seeking understanding that nobody can shift this world but us. Nobody. Nobody can bring change. God bless Trump. I know some of y'all don't want to, but you got to bless him because that's what the Bible told us to do. So, 
Pray for them that's in authority. Just stay with the word. I wonder what, okay, pause for a minute. I wonder what would a service be like if everybody just started praying for Donald Trump? Only a few saints said, no, don't, no. Since that is what he asked us to do. But anywho, nobody can bring change to this earth but us. Nobody. And when we can own that, um, the neighborhood I'm in or the cousins I have or the baby kids I might have, when we can own that they have been assigned to me and my purpose, when we can own that and stop looking outside at other people's lifestyles or other people's marriages, if we can own that the person I'm married is my responsibility. Why? If we can own that, if we can own that our children and the destiny of our children is my responsibility, and guess what? God have anointed me to handle it. Talk back to me. I am anointed. Y'all better work with me. I am anointed to do what God have asked me to do. And there is no circumstance that I could be put in that I can't handle. I'm anointed for this. Somebody needs to say, I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for this. And so when we first just kind of lay that and own that and grip that, then I kind of run out of excuses. I run out of excuses that so-and-so did something to me and that's why I stopped. Or I run out of excuses that this thing didn't recognize me. I run out of excuses that, oh, so-and-so didn't like me and so-and-so didn't appreciate me, so-and-so didn't bring me in. I run out of excuses of people because I'm too focused on what God have asked me to do. Work with me because we got to go somewhere this morning. When I own that, then you become sort of tunnel vision. And if I become tunnel vision, Lord, I love you so much. If I become tunnel vision, Father, for something that you have put in my heart, in my soul, that it toils with me and it walks with me and you wake up to it and you go to bed to it. When I begin to get tunnel vision in that, then it's got to happen. Great things will have to happen to change communities, change neighborhoods change schools I refuse to believe I refuse I refuse to believe that God will call a gathering Lord I love you so much I refuse to believe that God will call a gathering of prayer for his people and not have a portion of glory designated for us to go back and change the world So my options, in all due respect for me, my options of going places are narrowing and narrowing down because I want to get with people that's ready for the move. Y'all work with me. That understand that the move cannot happen without us. And it can't happen without sons and daughters of God getting on our faces and crying out to God for a move. Is that, am I at the right church? Are we in the... And so there's a message that I've, I've been teaching often, and it's called sits, uh, sit in his presence, meaning supplication, intercessor, and prayer. Understanding that there are stages and, and different layers of God that we could enter into and stages that God take us through. And the first one being supplication. Now, I'm not really sure if I'm going to go into all of it today, but I just want to kind of give you a foundation of where the Lord is speaking in this house. And all the way coming, the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, you know, and, and this is part of the supplication. Part of supplication means it's all about me. It means I'm bringing me to God. That's what supplication is. Supplication is I'm dealing with me. Now, the thing about supplication, intercessory, and prayer, and, and, and tra travail is that these are stages that we will forever go through while we're on this walk. There's no such thing as a rival. Uh, let, me, let me say that again. That, girl, man, you can forget that. There is no such thing as arriving in Christ. No such thing. Because the Bible told us we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So there's no arrival. There's no you got this. There's no um, little you and big me. There's none of that. But we grow and we mature. And in that maturity, he even told us, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. So there is always a balance of growth in the house of God. Because just when you think you're the strongest, you'll hit a pocket that'll make you weak and need somebody to help you. I know I'm telling the truth. It's called the Savior. So you got to understand this, this, this wave that we go through in Christ. And I truly believe that this is where sometimes we get stunned. And I think this is sometimes where we stop growing. Because somewhere we get in our mind that we've arrived. Or, or I don't know. I don't know. We get so anointed. We don't need to pray. Y'all know those kind of people. I don't know. I don't know. When, when we rely on gifts more than our prayer, you are.
already about to crash. You are. You're on your way for a crash because the gifts of God will work regardless, but your prayer life is what handles you. Let me say that again. Your gifts will work regardless, but your prayer life, that's what keeps you out of the devil's territory. I need some praise right there. Work with me. Work with me. So supplication is not something that says it's for the person that just got saved. It's for the person that understands my axe head is gone. And there's no sense in me constantly trying to work, constantly trying to labor, and I don't have the accent. I don't have the cut. I don't have the authority that I used to have because somewhere in laboring, I lost it. Supplication, Lord, I love you so much. It's where you come to God about you. It's about me. I think David put it best. Lord, it's me and me only that have done this evil in your sight. I'm not going to say they tempted me. I'm not going to say they pushed me. God, I did this against you and you only. That's what supplication is. Supplication is I own my mistakes. Y'all, please work with me. I'm going to own it. I did it. I did it. I, I admit, I, I, you know, they did put something, but I admit I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't have enough of you. I underestimated you. I overestimated how anointed I was. I wasn't as far as I thought I was. I admit it. It was me. Hi. Why do I have to come through this at minutes? The first thing that happens when you go into a hospital, you can have your arm falling off. You can have an eyeball dripping out, but they're going to take you through. Admit it. Now we'll see you. How did your eyeball get out like that? Did you saw your arm off? What happened? How much more coming before the presence of God? I'm not going to come before the presence of God with a whole bunch of flattery words. Let me just talk about me. I'm not going to come, oh God, you're wonderful. Oh, you're mighty king. There's none like you. There's nobody like you. I worship you. I did one of those prayers one time, and he's pulled me and said, hey, hey, hey. I, I know about me. I, you tell me about you. I know I'm great. I, yeah, get that. And sometimes on our walk, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Sometimes we do this and it's because almost as if we're ashamed. Almost as if we're embarrassed to really tell God, Lord, I love you, but I cussed before I came to church today. You know I want you, but I'm on my way to the divorce court. I need you to help me. Y'all not going to work with me. Supplication is keeping it real with God. And there's no shame. Lord, I love you so much. Oh, this is why I have to get broken every single time. There's no shame. Because he's a good, good father. It's who you are. Y'all know that. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. So if I can't take it to God, I'm sure not going to take it to my so-called prayer partner, seriously, and you going through too. I'm, I'm sure not going to take it to no social media. I ain't no confessions out here for y'all demons to criticize me and not. But you take it to a good father. Oh, Lord, I love you. And there is absolutely, Lord, I love you so much. There is absolutely nothing you can go through. There's no mistake you can make. that He can't say, I get it. I know the why. And the scripture says that I am faithful and I am just to forgive you means I'm just, I'm going to search out the why. Because I know the intents of your heart. Nobody else does. I know them. And so I don't need you to act like you got it going on when you got some issues right here. Because it won't allow me to get to you. I'm not looking for mannequins. 
I'm looking for vessels that hold my anointing. Come on, y'all, help me. Voice a vessel that I've anointed and I've appointed to hold my glory. And everybody can't do what you do. And did you think when I called you, I didn't know you was going to make that mistake? I am God. So the truth is the mistake caught you off guard, not me. I already knew you was going to do it. I, come on. Come on. Did y'all know you couldn't bring your halos to this service? You can't bring your halos to this service. He said it caught you off guard. David. It didn't catch me. Did you think when I called you in the shepherd's field, did you think I didn't think and I didn't know you was going to have your eye on another woman? Do you think I didn't know that you was going to bait her, seduce her, sleep with her? Did you think that I didn't know that you was going to set it up to kill her husband? Did you think that I didn't think that you was going to keep on doing ministry while you're doing all of those other transgressions? Did you think I didn't know? Why y'all ain't going to talk back to me? Did you think I didn't know, David? I knew it, and so I had to. I had to. I had to let you go all the way to let you see you. I already knew you. I need you to see you, David. And I let it go as far as it needed to because I needed the right prayer. I didn't need your religious prayer. I didn't need your prayer that you think I want to hear. I needed you to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Come on, y'all, and renew within me the right spirit. Can y'all work with me just a little bit? Just a little bit. He says, so I designated that way. And so if we really understand that we belong to God and God belongs to us, then shame and I don't know what to say and pride, I don't know what to say. Transparency becomes easy. Let me put it that way. Transparency becomes easy because my accountability and my calling didn't come from you. It came from God. And once he forgives me, up, oh, you ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm on my way to doing a work for God. I need y'all to praise him up in this house. Ain't nothing you can do about stopping my anointing. Once God has designated, once God has forgiven me, once God has raised me, I need about 10 people that's ready for it. I know I've been called for a purpose. Let's get a praise up in this house. Let's get a praise up in this house. Shut up, I seek when we possess that and when we own that then I owe all of my confessions to God I owe the Lord my heart I owe the Lord to go into the secret places our founder used to say oftentimes we do God like we do visitors and we bring them into our home and we ask them to have a nice seat in the living room because most of the time the living room will be clean but don't go in my bedroom where all the secret activities lie. Y'all work with me. Don't go into my kitchen and well, please don't go in my drawers. Don't pull them out. Don't look in my closet. God is saying if I'm going to be your God, I got to go everywhere, every part of your house, every part of your block. Every time I come into you, I got to go to every crevice of your heart. And because I'm a fair God, are y'all with me? Are you with me? And because I'm a fair God and because I'm a kind God and because I'm a gentle God and because I'm a God of order and because I'm a God that respects you, I can only go where you let me go. Because I have given you this power called your will. And so I'll go as deep as you want me to go. But don't think I'm just going to bombard. I'm not because I'm a respectful God. And because once I come up in there, I ain't coming in up there to visit. I'm coming to live forever. Come on, y'all. I come to take things over. So be careful what you ask for. Because if you want me to come in your heart, I'm going to purify it, wash it, cleanse it, purge it. Get ready because that boyfriend may not be on your mind no more when I get through. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Get ready because some of those things you're holding on, it may never come up again once I get through. I come in to own. I come in to take over. I need some praise up in this house. Hey, Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell him yes, Lord. Yes, that's me. Yes, that's me. Yes, that's me. 
also part of our growth in church. Please work with me because I'm kind of getting ready to turn the corner and almost done. Part of that growth, part of that possession is understand, church, that when your life is marked, then understand that things are going to happen to you that may not happen to other people. Persecutions, hard times, situations may happen to you that may not happen to other people. And you've got to get out of the pity part of why did this happen to me and cross over to the anointed part to say, God, how are we going to handle this? Because it wouldn't be coming at me if I wasn't anointed. It wouldn't be coming at me if my life wasn't marked. So i got to lie myself with you and find out why is this happening to me? I need some praise. And I'm outside, Jesus. So we cannot treat the body of Christ as though we're all equal. We're not equal. We are equal in his love. For God so loved the entire world that he gave his only begotten son. But within that realm, there's some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. There's some I give one talent, five talents, two talents. You got to know your ability. You got to own it. And you got to possess it between you and God. I need some praise because we got to go to another place. Get ready, church, because we got to go to another place. And so we cannot treat each other as though we're equal. We're only equal in love. Wait a minute, Pastor Bennett. We are even unequal in grace. The Bible said, some I'll have mercy and some I won't. It ain't none of your business who I've chosen. It ain't none of your business who I've marked. And where you see her walking the street and shaking your head and bringing your sanctified self to church every week, she'll be the very one I'll call in six weeks. I'll put an anointing in her belly and I'll cause her to preach. And it won't be none of your business. I can have mercy on whomever I will. I need some praise. Oh, let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to go to another place. The Lord is saying, come and think with me. Come up here with me. Come up here. Come up here with me. Nobody owns us. Nobody possesses us. God has ordered. God is never going to call and put an anointing on our lives and make us a renegade. He's going to teach us how to be subject to our leaders and subject to protocol. Are y'all working with me? Can I talk about Paul for just one minute? Can I talk about, we know what happened with Paul. He was a murderer. He was a blasphemer. We know what Paul, here he is on his way in the road to Damascus. He gets knocked off of his beast. A light comes into him. He's blinded for three days. God calls this man named Ananias. And he says to Ananias, I need you to go down a straight street. I need you to remove the scalp from Saul. He's like, yeah, no. No. He said, that dude killing folks. Seriously? No, no. Don't worry about Ananias. Don't worry. He's a brother now. Go and deliver him. He goes down. He sees him. He tells him everything God tells him to say. Paul said, dude, you my man because God told me the same thing. He said, yeah, it's on now. He removes the scalp from his eyes. Guess what? We never hear about Ananias again. But Paul did greater works than Ananias ever did. So what happens to Paul? He goes to the desert. He submits himself to God. Jesus himself begins to talk to him and train him. And what was the first thing he told him to do? Sub submit yourself to Peter. Go to Peter and submit yourself. He goes to Peter. Y'all ready for the church? Y'all ready for the church? He goes back to the church. He tells the church. He goes to Peter. Listen, God did something for me. He anointed me. Yeah, yeah, Peter's like, yeah, why you? Yeah, why would he choose you? Okay, yeah. I, 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 I don't know why, but he did. Now, how, watch this, watch this. Peter, I don't, I don't care how you judge me. You can't make me deny my experience. You can judge me. You can think God ain't called me. But man, I know what God did in my heart, my mind, my soul. I know that I am changed. I know that the person I used to be, I'm not that person anymore. So you can't judge why God is so ready to use me. I need a praise up in this house. You can't judge why God is so ready. Peter says, well, dude, you know, first of all, you need to go through our new members class. What? Y'all not going to work with me. I'm a pastor, I get it. You got to go through our new members class and have you been baptized? How have you been baptized? Y'all not going to work with me. I'm just saying, you need to be assigned a mentor and we don't want zeal to take over. Y'all not going to work with me. Paul said, yeah, uh, he ain't tell me none of that. So I tell you what, while you are trying to figure out 
if God really called me, I'm not confirmed with flesh or blood. I got to be about my father's business. I did what God told me to do. I came to the church, but the church wasn't ready for God to do a quick word. Y'all better help me. Wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. I truly believe that the hour is so late. I truly believe that the need for warriors is so strong. I truly believe that the desperation for vessels from heaven to pour his spirit in is so heavy that God is saying, all I want are the people that will tell me yes, that won't question me, that won't doubt me, and will even forgive themselves to know you are good enough for me to use. Oh, I believe those are the people that God is calling. Those are the people that are coming into prayer to say something greater than me is called me I need some praise up in this house let's get ready let's get ready let's get ready last story in the word of God first Samuel uh, 1 and 9 and you know the scripture and I'm just doing these scriptures but y'all I'm reading the stories but y'all know it's Bible stories right I'm at a Bible church okay good thank you. first Samuel we know the scripture first Samuel 1 and 9 here's this woman called Hannah here we are today it's called Hannah. And the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, what we have to do, Tammy, he said, the people have to understand that we have to grip the power to forgive. Yeah. I have, I have concluded that it is easier to repent than it is to forgive. This is my conclusion. And the reason why is because, let's just take, for example, let's take a father or a mother or family that's missing in action and this child is thrown into foster care year after year and abused and raped and molested. All these sort of things have happened to this child. And then this child one day finds Jesus along the way and Jesus comes into this child's heart. And then all of a sudden, 20 years later, 25 years later, here comes a mama and a daddy saying, I'm sorry. What? I know, right? All I went through, all the abuse, all the rejection, all the emotional trauma. And you're just going to bounce in my life after 25 years. Do y'all see what I'm saying? You're just going to bounce up in my life now that I'm prosperous, now that I'm okay. No thanks to you. Y'all not going to. All of a sudden, I'm just supposed to forgive you. And the Lord said, yes. And so scripture tells us, <clears throat> he said, we can come to me and you can ask me to do some things. He said, but I need you to stand in the position of forgiveness if you really are ready for me to forgive you. Sometimes situations happen, church, that people have offended us, and if we don't use the scripture to go to that person to let them know they've offended us, do you know how many people don't even know they offended you? Because we didn't do what the Bible said and go to them? Do you know how many things the devil get in and blow up and it wasn't that at all? Because we didn't fulfill the scripture. And if I was offended, I need to go to you. I got an issue. I need to go to you. I need, we got to the rest of this day, and I pray that somewhere between one of our sessions, if there's some things that you didn't let go, you text somebody, you, you know, I'm going to let that go. I forgive you. And the person may say, forgive me for what? Don't even trip over that. <laughs> don't trip. And let me tell you the biggest trip. Don't trip when they don't say, I'm sorry back. Because right. <laughs> I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this because you've been a weight. This thing has been a weight on me because it has captured me. Do you understand when you don't forgive, that person can hold you prisoner? Ex-wife situations, ex-husband situation, baby daddy drama, baby mama drama, stuff, stuff in the church. They didn't recognize me. They didn't appreciate me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Well, I know they said they were sorry, but they know, but it's over. It's over. And the Holy Spirit said, this is a must for us to move on. Because the truth is, I don't think any of us have been persecuted more than Jesus. I don't think any of us have been offended more than Jesus. So, so, so to our brothers and sisters, just let me work this for a minute because this is how God helped me. My husband, I appreciate him. Hey, he's not here. Hi, honey. Uh, my husband, he's, he's a basketball guy, and so we've been married 16 years, and he's done a great job at converting me. I am a basketball wife. Brothers, you should be proud of him. 
he, he did this. Anywho, so, so I, I, I was learning in the days of Kobe and in the days of, um, of Shaq and that whole team. I was learning in those days of LeBron coming on the scene. And so, so I, just forgive me because sometimes these analogies work. So, so wives, if you don't know, if you do know, girlfriends, whatever, that when a dude is in this game, leave him alone. Don't, that's the, that's the wrong time to ask, honey, do you love me? It's just the wrong time. It's, it's just. Honey, what do you want to eat? Whatever you want. I was thinking I wanted pizza. You want pizza? Whatever you want. No, I don't really have a taste for pizza. What about Chinese? Whatever you want. Why are you fussing at me? Because I told you whatever you want. So I had to learn this over time. But as I was learning the game and I'm watching the game, and so I'd ask, I, I, I learned not to ask a lot of questions, but a few, a few, a few, a few. Why was that a charge? Would just do like that. I'm oh, sorry, I asked. But what I began to watch with Kobe was I didn't understand why when he got the ball, I need y'all to work with me, and I use this analogy a lot because it worked for me. When he got the ball, I didn't understand why four of the five players would immediately go to him. And I saw this over, so finally I had to ask why three to four players would get to him. I said, wait, what? You want to say it fast. <laughs> Honey, why every time Kobe gets the ball? <laughs> Three to four, four players go after him. He said, Honey, because the other players know when Kobe get the ball, something going to happen. persecutions or people against us or because we're not wrestling with flesh and blood so sometimes stuff that come and you keep complaining and what you you didn't realize because the devil know there's an anointing on your life and so if I, I know once she get it stuff is gonna happen once he get it stuff is gonna happen I got to forgive you because really you have helped my anointing if you didn't talk about me I wouldn't have prayed as hard as I did if you didn't persecute me I never would have went to God like I did if you didn't judge me I never would have been so strong thank you to my enemies you have made me what I am I need y'all to praise him up in this house thank you you push the anointing out of me you push the prayer out of me you push the seek out of me you push the desperation out of me thank you for talking about me I forgive you because you did me a favor I need some praise up in this house I need some praise from some warriors I need praise from some warriors oh hey Oh, thank you for talking about me. It made me know God for myself. Oh, I need one more praise up in this house. One more, and we get ready to pray. Hey, somebody's belly, help me cry. Oh, hey, yeah, so it was with Hannah. Thank you. Hannah, y'all. Talk to my man. Hannah ain't got no kids, Lord. She driving the bins and she living in the suburbs and she got every Chanel and Gucci and Dolce. Ain't got no baby, though. I'll look at Hannah. Hannah trying to come to church and be this first lady. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And be all poised and go to the sisters conference and all around the table, everybody talking about their kids, pulling up their cell phone, look at each other's kids. And then there was Hannah, barren. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you understand that God has a suddenly for everything. Yeah, You understand God's got an appointed time and a set time and he don't operate by the devil's time or by this world's time and so Hannah and I'm talking to somebody in this house today the Holy Ghost said to some Hannah's in this house that the enemy have provoked you and 
irritated you and it seems as though things are not happening or you're in your family and your marriages and it seems like it's not getting better and there's situations and let me help you understand something about the power of prayer. The thing about the power of prayer is that prayer is pushing against principalities. And so this is the posture that God wants his people to get comfortable with. That, yeah, okay, so i got to go through my supplication where I've told the Lord about me. Okay, but I'm still chosen. I know I'm still chosen. And then it goes to that next layer, which is the intercession where I don't even have words because it's so deep. I'm so broken. You know what? I'm glad that God can read my tears. I'm glad that every drop that comes out, there's a word that God know that was just too deep for me to speak. It was too painful for me to find an English language. There was no vernacular that could describe how I feel. So, Father, thank you that my tears have power with you. So is that thing called the intercession where the Holy Ghost take it up for us in moanings and groanings. Truth be told, church, I think sometimes we say too many words and sometimes it's just need to be sometimes sometimes because there's no words to really describe how you feel and that's called the intercession and I say this everywhere I go because I'm really careful and I'm really a little concerned how we know we have intercessories and intercessory prayers and those kind of things and and like I say every time you know I consider me one and we have them in our church but I try very hard to not allow people to depend on an intercessor more than the Holy Spirit that's inside of them I I push that real hard because honey I ain't gonna be on your job with you when you're ready to cuss your boss out you're gonna need an intercessor i'm not gonna be with you at home when your husband or wife get on your nerve you're gonna need an intercessor you better depend on that intercessor inside of you call the holy ghost i need some praise right there i need praise and so why, church, work with me? Because when I get used to crying out for my own soul, then it won't be difficult for me to cry out for somebody else. Because I understand what it is to be locked in chains by Satan. And when Satan is tormenting your mind and when your heart is broken, but somewhere through prayer and crying, I got my breakthrough. So it's not hard for you to pray for somebody else because I don't want to see anybody else bound up, trapped up like I was. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that becomes that intercession but it's taking me to a birthing place it's the birthing place and I truly again this is all just me perspective I truly believe the church is behind time for the birthing place y'all feel me y'all feel me this the day is over to compare church and come it's over it's over it is over to compare deliverance ministry from word of faith and who's got, y'all know what I'm talking about. It is over. And if I stay with scripture, that was all man junk anyway. He said, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they had nothing to do with your church organization. I ain't offend nobody, did I? And when we understand this battle is bigger than all of us. Come on, church. You think the devil said, I won't mess with them because they church God in Christ. No. Why y'all not going to be honest with me? You're going to leave me out here all by myself. You think the devil said, they're assemblies of God. I won't bother them. Let me tell you about sin. It has no respect to persons. Let me tell you about the devil. He ain't, got, he ain't racist. He ain't prejudiced. He will tear anybody's life up that will let him. So then how much more should the church be to call on Jesus and get the devil up out of our neighborhoods, get the devil up out of our schools? We have authority. Y'all better work with me. Get him up out of the government. Y'all better help me. It's a birthing time. And so what is that next stage? It is travail. And that travail is because I'm carrying something that have purpose from God. So it's not about me at all. It's not about your ministry. It's not about how many hours of prayer you've done. It's about a vessel that God has said, a person has said, yes, Lord. I get that the enemy is against me and I get the persecution, but something great is inside of me. This is the call. God is calling his children because the thing that I love about prayer services 
is this an easy service because it's calling people that love to pray. So you don't get a lot of spectators. Y'all know what I'm saying. You get people that get, we're here to call on the name of Jesus. And so the Bible says that Anna, Hannah, we know the story. That Hannah got so vexed that her husband said, honey, can I not? And with everything I've given you, she said, it ain't about you. Because when the spirit is calling you, it's something so deep, flesh can't satisfy. And the spirit, you're here today, you're here. When the spirit begins to call you when the spirit of God's hand is on your life. Oh, you feel it, honey, and nothing satisfies you but him. And so you stay in this posture of I need more of him. And you'll come out of a very highly anointed service, but something's still there that says, I need more. And so Hannah was at a posture in her life that I can't take this persecution anymore, Father. I know your hand is on me, and your hand ain't on me to be barren. Your hand is on me to bring forth. I need brothers and sisters in this house to reflect on your own story. I need brothers and sisters in this house to reflect on the story that the church don't even know of where God brought you from and what God brought you through. And was it to just only do what you're doing? Or is there something greater that you know that he's called you to? Are y'all working with me? Are you working with me? Because the thing about birthing is it has nothing to do with holding a mic. It's got everything with bringing forth something that's going to shift the world. It has nothing to do with callings that we see up front. It's got everything to do with shifting things. It's time for our earth to be shifted. And it can only happen through us. This is my message, and this is almost my only message. Everywhere I go now, the church has to shift the world, and we have to understand our dominion, and we have to understand our powers. Are y'all still working with me? We have to take ourselves out of the I'm not worthy and put ourselves in he's worthy and he called me. Are you working with me? We have to take ourselves out of our faults and say since he chose me, then he's going to bear my weakness. And in my weakness, his strength will be made perfect. Are y'all working with me? Are you working with me? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And so Hannah, just a little worship, brother, and I'll, I'll find you wherever you are. So Hannah, begin to weep before the Lord. And we can move this. And, and that was my, and those were my scriptures. And so y'all got me. Hannah began to weep before the Lord. And she wept. And she wept until the priest thought she was drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I love those kind of services. Where I don't care what you think about me. I don't care. I don't care. I, can't. I just think it's desperate times to get an answer from the Lord. Uh, Pastor, the Lord uh, called me home to stay home these past two and a half years, and it was huge. It was huge. It was huge to do it. Huge. But it was because he was shifting me. This had nothing to do with anybody. And some people took some things personal. It had nothing to do with anybody. But how many know that you you got to do what God called you to do. You can't care. You got to make sure your heart is right. You do things right. You feel me? And so what he said to me was, Tammy, you know you minister a lot on the East Coast and the South, but you're in California. It's another beast here. He said, you're trying to make an East Coast ministry work in a West Coast land. He said, it's different demons, different warfare. It's totally different. The West Coast is almost a godless generation. Almost. Because anything goes. Everything is accepted. Uh, Sundays are not seen as a day of church. It is, I'm off and I'm going to the beach. That's California. It is the birthing place of many new demons. That spread themselves throughout the United States. Are y'all working with me? He said, you got to know your harvest. And you got to know your land. And so I came home. You know why? Because I didn't care about my name. I cared that I pleased my father. 
And so I did. And it has changed my life. It's changed my perspective. So we've had many things happen within our state and within our city. There was a thing called, um, I was forget the name, let me pull it up, hold on. Um, um, conversion therapy. Yeah. Where they wanted a law that Christian counseling would not be allowed for people struggling or for the LGBTQT community. They wanted a law to say it cannot be done. Pastors from all over the state got together and prayed. Pastors came together because this is a new warfare. You understand, if they get set in California, it will shut us down. And their point was that us saying and teaching the biblical principles of man and woman confuses them. And we're causing their suicidal attempts and their depression. Y'all work with me. Y'all work with me. The Lord used a man at Azusa University to have the words of wisdom to speak to one of the men that was over it and other pastors. And this man himself is gay. But this man's heart was turned and they totally tabled the bill. You know why? Because saints got together. Do y'all you know, work with me with your power? Work with me with your power. The city of Sacramento, there was a shooting on the Stephon Clark case where he had, unfortunately, again, another African American man who was killed by the hands of a police officer. He was unarmed. And, and so there was a major uproar. And so now it was time for the verdict. The mayor called city officials together, spiritual leaders together. Obviously, it's not to change your verdict. Pastor, I don't get into political things at all, but the Holy Spirit said, Tammy, we want peace in this city. I have friends that are in the police force in different suburban areas outside of Sacramento, and their wives came to me and said, Hey, I just want to kind of give you a heads up. The police forces all over every county outside of Sacramento is preparing to come in the city for the verdict and for the war. They're preparing for the riots. Do y'all hear me? You know what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit said, Tammy, I want peace in this city. Eight weeks every Friday, we met with the mayor. Eight weeks. And while y'all, can y'all work with me? We all know there's an injustice. Y'all work with me and tell the truth. The Holy Spirit said, this is not the form for that, Tammy. It's not going to bring peace. We want peace. And so it got so ignited in me that they coming after me. And I said, listen, I don't mean no harm. But the Bible said, he that handles a matter wisely shall find good. And it got so bold in me that I said to them, God said, we got to have peace in our city. Not another child can be killed. Needless to say, we rolling up to the day. And the Lord gave me favor with the family to minister to the family. The Lord gave me favor with the family that I went with the family to see the district attorney. The Lord gave me favor with the family that I was able to speak and stand with the mayor. And the Lord blessed our city. We had peace when there could have been a riot. I need y'all to understand your authority. We have power to our young people. You are anointed for your peers. We will never be in these college campuses. You are. We will never be in your high schools. You are. We have no idea the demonic warfare that you're facing. And we never will. It's not our assignment. It's yours. And I'm here to tell you God have anointed you for this season to be light in your schools. I need some adults to help me praise them with our young people. And let them feel their armor. And let them feel their power. So what are we going to do? We're going to pray a Hannah's prayer. And we're going to go before the Lord. And you're going to pull down things God has been talking to you about. That you've been tabling and that you've been pushing back. You're going to stop saying he's not talking to me. He's only talking to you. 
Nobody else can hear it or feel it but you. We're going to pull up things that God told us when we first got saved and that you got so busy in church that you missed your assignment. Are y'all working with me? Are you working with me? We're going to pull up the impossible things that he's spoken to your spirit. And because you didn't see it happen immediately, you stopped praying and you got discouraged. Uh, though the vision tarry, just wait on it. It's going to speak and it is not going to lie. I need our saints that's been walking with the Lord for a minute to understand you've got seasoned prayers that young people don't know how to tap in God the way that you know, you know how and God needs your prayers I need some praise up in this house because we're all in this we're all we're all in this let's pull it let's pull it let's pull it let's pull it you're pulling your mind in now you're lifting your heart before the Lord now you're pulling your mind in now you're lifting your heart before the Lord now we have assignment pull it in pull it in why are you still here why couldn't the cancer take you because you have assignment pull it in why didn't you have a nervous breakdown because God's got assignment he needs your story he needed your story why did you come through it because he needed your story he left you as a testament Come on, see on that old Shondo Baha. He left you as a testament, and there's a glory that goes with your story. Your heart is lifted before the Lord. You're pulling it in now. You're pulling it in now. There you go. There you go. You're pulling it in now. You're no longer underestimating that God had purpose for your life. There's no underestimation of it. No underestimation that God has purpose. And nothing is over until God says. It is over. I need some praise up in this house. I need some praise up in this house. I need your boldness. I need your uniqueness. I need it. I need your boldness. I need your uniqueness. And I need you to be nobody but you. And quench not the burning that you feel. Quench it not. Don't quench it. 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 He's here. Don't quench it. Don't quench it. He's here. Don't quench it. Don't quench it. But release it. My wound, you've kept it. You've kept my wound. For spiritual things, don't quench it. Don't quench it. Don't quench it. Purpose is what I seek. It shall be. I feel the anointing of Elijah. I will run. I will run. I will press. I will sacrifice. Give me my double portion. Oh, Kabasi. Oh, oh, preach with me, brother. Oh, come on, see, I feel the storm coming. It's my time. It's my time. Oh, Tell him yes, Lord. Open your heart and tell him yes, Lord. It's my time. We're ready to go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to go. Put my music in just a little bit. Let's get ready to go before his presence. Hands are lifted before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you just as I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm bringing my heart just as I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift my soul up before the O Lord. I lift my soul up. And I'm coming just as I am. I bring you all. I bring you all my weakness. I bring you all my struggles. Give me what I need, 
Jesus. Give me, give me what I need. Help me to please you, Gina. Give me, give me what I Give me what I need. You're the one that matters, Jesus. You're the one that matters in my soul. In my soul. It's turning. It's turning in my soul. It's turning in my belly. Let my best days be in your presence, Jesus. Let my best days be walking in your will, Jesus. Let my best days be filled to you, Jesus. It's my soul. It's my soul. Pray with me. It's my soul. It's my soul. I'm coming before you, Jesus. I'm coming before you, Jesus. I'm coming before you. Go. To the secret place of my soul. I want you, Jesus. May nothing be hid. May nothing be hid from me, oh Lord. I need you to fix it, Jesus. I need you to fix it for my soul. I need you to fix it. I need you to fix it for my soul. My soul, I need a fix. I need a fix for my soul. Give it to me. I need a fix. I want you to fix my heart. I want you to fix my soul. I know what you told me, Jesus. Open your heart and tell him, Yes, Lord. Open your heart, church. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Open your heart and tell God yes. We're going before his throne. Tell him yes. We're going before his throne. Tell him yes. Yes. I'm ready to obey you, Jesus. Yes. Whatever you need me to do, Jesus. Yes. I need it. What the will of my soul and what the will of my heart, what the will of my soul and what the will of my heart, my soul is weary, Jesus. It's you that I seek, my soul is weary, Jesus. It's you that I want, the end of my seeking. Show me, Jesus. Open up and tell God, yes. Clap those hands, Zion, and tell God. Come on and help me. Come on in the Oba. Hey, come on. Come on, see on the Oba. Let me hear the groaners cry. Oh, Yelaba, see Ki on the Oba. Nothing's over, Yelaba, say. Until God says it, Yelaba, Oba. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. It's too hard for you. to hear a church cry oh I need it in your baba baba bassi hands lifted before the Lord hands lifted heaven I know way Jesus hands lifted Thou art the 